بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد يشك الأمم أن تداء عليكم كما تداء الأكل إلى قسعتها The day time will soon come where the kuffar, the disbelievers will summon one another and will attack you and will wipe the ummah out like how when people gather on a tester khan, a banquet and they invite each other to share the dish this ummah will be fragmented and they'll be made into morsels and the kuffar will consume whichever part of the ummah they like at their leisure Saba was surprised and shocked as they had seen the victories, they had seen the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is it possible that Batil will wipe, up the Mus- wipe out the Muslim ummah and fragment them and consume them like pieces and morsels of food? فَقَالَ قَائِلٌ وَمِنْ قِلَّةٍ نَحْنُ يَوْمَئِذٍ O Nabi of Allah, possibly on those days, that time, the Muslim Ummah will be small in number, but they'll be limited. Is that the main factor that will cause this? قَالَ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ كَثِيرٌ No. On that day, you will be in great numbers. وَلَكِنَّكُمْ غُثَاءٌ كَغُثَاءِ السَّيْلِ you will be so much in number like the scum and the dirt that is witnessed in a flood. وَلَيَنزِئَنَّ اللَّهُ مِنْ صُدُورِ عَدُوِكُمُ الْمَهَابَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove the fear from the hearts of the enemy. وَلَيَقْذِفَنَّ اللَّهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمُ الْوَهْنِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will instill wahn in your hearts. وَقَالَ قَائِلٌ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهُ مَا الْوَهْنِ O oh, Nabi of Allah, what is this wahn, this weakness? Nabi alayhi salam said, حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا وَكَرَاهِيَةُ الْمَوْتِ It's the love of this world and the dislike of death. So few things we can understand that will happen in the Ummah. One is different unions, different organizations, different syndicates will get together. And they will consume the Muslim Ummah. The Muslim Ummah will have no strength, they will have no structure. All these structures will be a mirage, it will be an outward structure. A simple thing like military equipment that is bought from these structures, they, could, they have chops. They could detonate, activate, deactivate. So all the technology that you are buying and paying billions of dollars is literally worthless at the time when will be needed. Likewise, the financial system, and we'll go in detail, inshallah, of how they've created financial structures and financial systems. So while you rivaling and fighting to build skyscrapers, which was done 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago, which was a thing of pride. Now you are proud about just one billion that's high. And that was the mizaj of Firaun, Haman, Qarun, when they were told to build a structure to declare war with Allah. So they will consume the Muslim Ummah. And like how morsels as different Dastarkhans alludes to the fact that they will not want to see the Muslim Ummah one big nation. So the Ottoman Empire, etc. And we can study history, we'll understand this point. They divide and rule. So as much as Muslim countries, they could divide and highlight tribal fanaticism, where people are worried about their tribes and their culture and their background. But there's no priority, there's no focus on Deen, Akhirat and the Muslim Ummah. And then you will be numerous at that time, like the scum, the rubbish that is carried away by the torrents of a flood. Means that La ilaha illallah, they 
باتل اینڈ دی پلاننگ لی تزول امین ہول جبال کین ایون وائپ آؤٹ اے ماؤنٹین دی پلاننگ وی سچ دیٹ وی ایور دی وانٹ ٹو سینڈ دس فلڈ دی ال وائپ آؤٹ دی مسلم امم ان تورنس اینڈ دس مسلم امم وچ از دیٹ سکم دیس فلوٹین اون دیٹ واتر Nobody cares about it, right? Because it's valueless. So when that flood, that strong water comes and carries dirt, nobody worries about it because it's worthless. At that point in time, my ummah will be worthless. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that point in time will remove the fear from the hearts of the enemy means they will have yakin and believe that the Muslim Ummah now is finished. Wahan, according to Lisan al-Arab, it means any type of weakness. Nabi al-Islam gave us an example of this weakness. He said, hope with dunya, when morning and evening, day and night, the fikr and the worry and the concern of this Ummah is amassing wealth and rivalry for becoming better in dunya. And there's no rivalry, there's no shock, there's no ambition to strive for akhirat. And karayat al maut indicates that this ummat will have so much love of dunya that they will hate death. They will have so little but love of Allah and the shock to meet Allah and the shock for akhirat. The zahiri, whatever we see in, will become the yaqeen in the ummah. In the batini, akhirat. So, mushahada and ghayb. Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb. It was highlighted. When this ummat's yaqeen is in the ghayb, then that's where their strength is. And Allah highlighted that in the beginning verses of the Qur'an. But they will be seen so much of this batil. They will be seen so much and indoctrinated so much that they will have no desire for shahadat. We see weakness. How many houses today, Muslim Ummah, how many khatams are made every day? How many Muslim houses, the nights are kept alive? Let's go before the lockdown. How many masajid, the Fajr and the Jumma Salat, how many masajid in the world? Let's do some statistics. The Jumma and the Fajr amount of Musallis were the same. So in every avenue, forget in the dunyawi line, but even in the dini line, the ummah has deteriorated. Just as an example to understand how they will eat the Muslim ummah, and we have to be making a lot of tawbah, a lot of istighfar, and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. COVID is a real disease. It has been developed and engineered for a purpose. And we have to come out of denial. It is real. It is a reality. Allah give us tawfiq to complete this chapter, but we will understand on the foregoing things to be said. If we just look at the genocide of the Christian Serbs against the Muslims of Bosnia, 100,000 Muslims who became shaheed, 60,000 women and girls were raped. One and a half million people were left homeless. And it is said, the books of history write, it was like a medieval war of killing. Starvation of the Muslims and reduced every basic right. The Holocaust lasted for about four years, which they demolished 800 masajid some which were three, four, five hundred years old. The Sarajevo Historical Library was burnt. Can we imagine how much historical resources? I'm not even going to get into Iraq and what they got into there. And the United Nations that came assisted in the tyranny. And articles have been written, we can go study. When the Serb commander was asked why, just to mock the Muslim, he said, because they don't eat pork. But they say that the days of the Bosnian massacres, there was a map which showed the location of rape camps of Muslim women. They actually had camps where Muslim women were gathered 
and they were raped. They found 17 huge camps within Serbia. 17 camps of our mothers, sisters and daughters that were repeatedly raped up to children from the age of four, five, six, seven years were raped. And Muslim women that were pregnant, the soldiers would bet if it was a boy or girl. The mother's stomach while she was there in front of them would be slut. And they would take out the baby to verify if it was a male or female. Muslim leaders were invited and assassinated. They say the siege of Srebrenica where international soldiers together with the Serbs used to have parties and bargained and exchanged Muslim women. The besiege of Srebrenica lasted for around two years, which the shelling never ever stopped. Then the people of Batil united the Dutch battalion protecting Srebrenica conspired with the Serbs they encouraged the Muslims to surrender their weapons in exchange for safety. That happened now also recently, and I'm not going to get into those countries and the details, where they promised the Muslims peace, and they said, surrender your weapons, and we will give you all the amnesty you need. When the Muslims did that, all their weapons were confiscated, and the Muslims were then killed in cold blood. and they were tortured, punished and killed. They say in one instant again, the 12,000 Muslim males, boys and men, and that's why we have huge graves. One Serb stood on a Muslim man and he dug out from his face an image of an orthodox cross. And the slaughter continued, the tyranny and the zulum that had happened at that time. If we just look at the words of Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have to cry tears of blood. Jamaat that went and met people afterwards, Jamaat that went to America and met, met people who came as refugees, explained the situation. We were like brothers and sisters that very na same neighbor that we used to play with and grew up our whole life came into our houses, killed our parents, raped us. As a Muslim Ummah, we should not be relaxed. إِلَّا الْقَوْمَ الْخَسِرِ وَلَا يَأْمَنُ مَكْرَ اللَّهِ That a believer does not be contented and be relaxed except those people that are the losers. So we should not be part of the losers and start worrying about securing our dunya, but we've not secured our akhirat and effort is not made in that direction. If we look at Hollywood, and how this group of people will consume the Muslim Ummah, how they will try to infiltrate the Muslim Ummah and corrupt, corrupt their minds. If we look at the history of Hollywood, they say the trades were three worshippers. And the Holly was a sacred symbol because it was sacred to the mother Holly or Hell, the goddess of the underworld the goddess of the underworld. The European tradition has it that the holy tree repels evil and it had longevity. So when they, in those days, they used to do their planning and their plotting, they used to use this part of their wands, part of their magic, part of their planning. So Hollywood is a place of magic where they will control your minds and their hearts of people. They have the red carpet which was a bloodbath or bloodline coming down from the past 
when they have these awards, the red carpet signifies that ceremony. If you look at the Oscar, the Oscar is the most recognized trophy in the world. But it depicts a knight in Art Deco, which is according to the form and shape of the Crusader's sword. And it had five spokes. I'm not going to get into detail if we can do research to research. In the buildings there, it's been written, Disney World, Freemasonry builds its temple among the nations and in the hearts of men. The plotting is very far fetched. Nabi Ali Salam has explained the plotting. So, Hollywood itself is a place of magic to control your minds and hearts. And all the ideologies and concepts are being promoted and propagated. And that's one of the things which will cause weakness in the hearts of the Ummah. Then we got television. They telling you a vision, their own vision, their own plans for the future. That's what they telling you. This is besides the subliminal messages which are intertwined in the reels. Independently, bold, bright daylight, and in the hidden un unknown scenes, both ways they are targeting television. And then you have TV channels, because each channel is channeling their propaganda. And it's called a program, because they are programming you. They want to control you. So we have to be very careful and wary. Nabi alayhi salam has warned us, as a Muslim Ummah, we need to be prepared externally and internally to combat this battle. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq of making amal. May Allah give us the tawfiq of understanding. Previously we did the importance of reading Surah Tabarak. Nabi alayhi salam said, my heart desires that the Surah should be in the heart of every believer. Likewise, Tabarak al-Ladhi in Alif Lam Mim Sajda, one riwayat, is like a person who stands in the night of Laylatul Qadr on the 27th night, 70 virtues are added, 70 sins are condoned. Nabi Ali Islam would not go to sleep until he had recited Surah Tabarak al in Alif Lam Mim Sajda. Then to have a habit of reading Surah Waqiyah, Man Qara Surah Al Waqiyah fi kulli laylatin lam tusib hufaqa. Whoever reads Surah Waqiyah every night, and starvation, he will never be afflicted with starvation. وَكَانَ ابْنُ مُسْعُودٍ يَأْمُرُ بَنَاتَهُ يَقْرَأْنَ بِهَا كُلَّ لَيْلَةٍ So Abdullah ibn Masood had a habit of enjoining his daughters to recite the Surah every night. Part of Surah Waqiyah, Ar-Rahman, Al-Hadid, the Musabbihat also. They say a person who reads these will be reckoned amongst the people of Jannatul Firdaus. Surah Waqiyah is called Surah Al-Ghina. And Nabi Ali Islam is encouraged us, teach it to your children, teach it to your wives. These are the amal that we need to hold steadfast onto. Ultimate success lies in the hands of Allah. We need to connect to Allah.